Okay, let's talk about tools. Let's talk about the tool itself, the collet, the collet nut, the tool holder, even the pull stud, and how that all becomes the tool assembly, even though we're often just gonna call it a tool. And because it's the most important tool assembly for beginners to get to know, we're gonna talk specifically about tool one. The mill can hold 31 tools all inside this giant octagon. And if you walk all the way around to the back of the mill and peer inside, you can see them in there. But for now, I just want you to concern yourself with tool one and how to get this tool into the spindle and make it valid in the eyes of the mill. Loading it into the spindle is noisy business, so put on some ear protection along with your safety glasses. That should always be on. Look at the controller to confirm that the active tool in the mill is tool one. If you can't see this screen, just hit the program button and then confirm tool one. You should have just powered up the mill and run spindle warm up, so this should be all set. If it's not, just ask for help. When you confirm tool one on the controller, you are confirming that the mill expects that whatever you put into the spindle next is gonna be identified as tool one. So let's put it in there. Now what's critical as we proceed is that your spindle has no tool in it. If you're not quite sure, just ask the helper before proceeding. Reach into the mill and push this load unload button and get ready for a loud rush of air. <laughs> Practice pushing it several times until that sound no longer startles you backwards 10 feet. <laughs> now pick up tool one and flip it around until the pull stud is on top and look at it. I want you to imagine that up inside the spindle where you cannot see, there is a claw. And when you push the load unload button, the claw is going to grab onto the pull stud and pull the pull stud up into the spindle. So let's do it. Take your tool holder and notice these little cutouts on either side and lean into the mill and notice that the spindle has these dog ears, sometimes called drive dogs, that are gonna bump down into those cutouts. So go ahead and insert the pull stud up into the spindle and align your cutouts with the dogs. This is misaligned and this is nicely aligned, ready to notch in. And notice that the tool holder is very floppy and clanky at this point. Now the key safety detail, before pushing the load button, notice the position of your hand. This gap is about to close. No part of yourself, your hand, your fingers, the little webbing between your thumb and your index finger, nothing can be in that gap when you load the tool. Otherwise, we'll be heading off to the hospital to get some stitches. Thankfully, there is a nice, clear indication of the boundary line between the safe zone and the place you shall not be. It's this collar right here. It runs around every tool holder we've got. Just keep your hand below the collar when loading a tool and you will be a-okay. Okay, here we go. Haul the helper slash supervisor over to check your hand position and then proceed. Have one finger over the load button, raise that tool holder as high as you can up into the spindle, line up the drive dogs with the notches and then push and hold the load button. Long enough to imagine that claw inside grabbing onto the pull stud and starting to pull it up. You'll feel it kick the tool holder down and then pull it back up into the spindle. Then release the load button and imagine the claw closing, grabbing, and pulling upward. Notice how the dog ear has slotted right into the notch. Good, now practice and unload. Keep your hand on the tool holder below the collar. Get ready to receive the weight of the tool holder as the spindle lets go. Then place your finger over the load unload button. Ready yourself and then push it long enough to allow the tool to fall down in your hand away from the reach of the claw. Good, now practice this move over and over again. Load and unload at least 15 times. You want to get nice and comfortable with this procedure. You want to feel the weight of the tool and know what to expect. You want to hear all the sounds the machine makes. You want to have little whoopsies where you don't quite align the dog ears just right. 
it's absolutely critical that you practice this move because this misalignment is bad. It positions the tool holder too low such that the tool change arm is going to crash into it, causing significant damage. And I absolutely believe that you can learn to notice the difference between a misaligned tool holder and one that is properly aligned with the dog ears. Just go slow, practice it a lot, and ask the helper lots of questions. Now these last three stickers should make a ton more sense. Align the dog ears, don't misalign them, and do all of this intense stuff when loading tools. Okay, congrats, you've gotten a tool into the spindle. The last thing you've gotta do is take it on out of there again and put it back on the rack. Every tool that stays in the mill has to be measured immediately after loading it, and tool measurement is the topic of the next video. So let's take a little breather before tackling that topic.